Okay, hi, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to this session. Uh, my name is Diego and this is about the challenges of using containers to run graphical embedded systems. So a uh, few words about who am I. Uh, I am embedded engineer at Kinetics. I have work on lots of different OSs uh, built from Yocto or uh, Android operating system. Uh, so my experience is building uh, everything from the kernel to everything in, in user space. Um, what this session is about, to look around and see the possible approaches to use containers, which are a technology um, very, very used in, for example, web services and web servers in general, um, also on embedded. And in this case, also with graphical applications. So QT application, GTK applications, and so on. So first, a quick poll. How many of you are using, already using containers, for example, Docker? Okay, so most of you, right? And how many are already using them on embedded devices? Okay, so not that many. So uh, we think that we can enjoy the benefits of, the, of, uni, of using containers also on embedded boards. So we are not trying to uh, show the products that are available because there are products trying to solve this problem, but instead we wanted to evaluate all the possible options that are um, easily available. It's not that difficult, but you need to have a look and evaluate what's best for you. So here's what we'll see today. Um, so, why we want to do that, um, the options are available, uh, the impact of uh, having the drivers uh, outside of the container, so you need to have uh, the kernel uh, on the host, which is running the Docker daemon. Uh, and especially we want to have a look at 3D graphics, so OpenGL uh, applications. We want to have a look uh, if there's a performance difference between running natively um, um, or if Docker doesn't make a, a difference, which is what we expect. And also, of course, when you select an option to run your graphical application, um, in a container, you want to take into account security. Okay, so why? First of all, uh, we have experience uh, with building Yocto operating system, and a lot of times people just want to install a new package, and you probably need to build everything from sources, uh, and every small difference in the sources require, requires compiling everything again. So we wanted to avoid the hassles of building everything from sources if that's not needed. Of course, um, building an application inside a container has packaging advantages. So, uh, for example, you can build all that you need and describe uh, your requirements in a Docker file and quickly uh, build an image. And also, you can easily move your application from an ar architecture to a different architecture if uh, the base image in your container supports that. For example, if you are using uh, Ubuntu Docker image, you will have support for x86 for ARM 32 bits and ARM 64 bits. So uh, your Docker file will not change. Only the, the 
image that is pulled um, by Docker changes. So you already know what containers are, um, but this is what we need to pay attention when uh, using containers. So the difference with respect, with respect to virtual machine uh, is that containers don't have hardware virtualization. So the kernel is running on the host operating system. It's not part of the container. On the other side, um, in CH root, you don't have the process and network isolation you have in Docker. So you are running in the same process space when using CH root. So here's a, a, small di a simple diagram about what we want to do. So again, we have uh, an operating system, uh, we call it the core OS, which is running on the host. Uh, the kernel is running, is part of this operating system, and the user space, for example, also the Docker uh, daemon, the Docker runtime, is part of the uh, core operating system. But then we want to run our graphical application in the container. So how can, it, can we do that? Um, in general, in general um, graphical applications are clients in a server and client architecture. So if you're running X11, you have an X11 display server and your application are X11 clients. And the same goes uh, for Wayland. So how can we actually run a graphical application in a container. There are different ideas. One of them is the simplest one, I think, uh, is to use uh, the network remote protocols that are already available. For example, think of VNC. Uh, you can already run remotely a graphical application uh, in a different machine. Uh, but of course, that means that in the middle you have a network protocol. You can use local IPC, for example, socket sharing. We'll see a bit more about that later. Or um, you can use a display server on the host and the client window in the container. And the last option, uh, which is the most radical, is to move everything in the container. So you just have the kernel and the drivers and, and the rest in the, in the container. So you can run an X11 display server in the container or a Western compositor. Okay, so uh, in the previous slide, we had the high-level options, and we are now going into the, the details. Uh, if you want to follow along, the slides are already uploaded, so um, this, kind of, this part is kind of difficult. But um, I've named the options, so you will see references to this list of options uh, later. Um, so, Specifically for, specifically for X11, um, I wrote this list of possible options. Uh, the first one uh, is, again, to use a network remote protocol, for example, VNC or XPRA, um, to connect from the container to the X display server, which is running on the host. The second option, uh, which has security implications, uh, which we'll discuss later, is to run the X display server on the host again, but just share the X11 socket to the container. So the container has direct access 
uh, to the X11 socket and your windows, uh, your window is not that different to the other X11 windows that are running uh, locally on the host. This is not a great idea because it doesn't provide isolations, isolation. Um, a better idea is to use something called X on X, uh, which is a full X display server running inside the main display server. So in this case, your application will not see the parent X display server, but a new one created, for example, by Xephyr. Uh, this provides good isolation, but as we were talking about, we will not have uh, GPU 3D uh, acceleration, so uh, it has some drawbacks. A good idea, I think, is the D option. So to actually run a Wayland compositor on the host, so for example like Weston, and have your X11 application be a X Wayland client. So basically, uh, your application will talk the Wayland protocol thanks to the X Wayland implementation. So uh, you will not have uh, a D uh, X11 display server on the host, uh, but only uh, a translation uh, between the two, the two protocols. The last option is to have everything in the container. So uh, you just have a shell, nothing else on the um, so virtual console on the host. And in the container, you have the, for example, uh, XORG, X11 display server implementation, and also your X11 application. So let's see uh, how we can run Wayland applications now. So uh, if you have, uh, if you're using uh, GTK or Qt to develop your application, um, you will likely have the possibility to switch easily between uh, using an X11 backend or Wayland backend. But if you don't have that option and you still have an, an X11 um, legacy application, you will have to, um, to use the, the X11. So in case you can run a Wayland native client, um, again, there are similar options. So Wayland uh, compositor, uh, running on the host and a Wayland application client in the container. Or again, move everything inside the container and have, uh, for example, waste them uh, inside uh, the container. The last option, but I don't really like it, is to have X11 display server on the host and then run Wayland as X11 client, uh, Wayland compositor as X11 client, and inside you have the Wayland application. But I don't see any good reason to do things like that. Okay, so let's see some uh, details about the options that we described before. So XPRA uh, is a good example of uh, using a remote protocol. Um, the advantage is that it has good isolation and it's called also screen for X11, so you can also detach from sessions and reattach like you would do with a uh, screen um, on the common line. Um, so it is a good solution if you don't require uh, 3D graphics. So if you don't need this GPU acceleration, it's a good solution. Another option that we mentioned before uh, is running an X on X implementation uh, like Zephyr. And this one provides you isolation because you are having two different X11 display servers. Um, so your application is 
um, isolated in the child X11 display server. Again, you cannot use the GPU uh, with, this, with this solution. Okay, so let's have a look at one of the solutions that I like the most, which is having a Wayland compositor running on your host. So again, we see that uh, the host OS, the core OS, let's call it, um, is running the kernel and some user space uh, on the hardware. Um, and then we have the, uh, our graphical applications inside the container. In this case, uh, we are using the Wayland protocol between the host and the container. And uh, because the Wayland protocol is much more secure than X11, uh, it is actually a good solution to run both uh, a Wayland um, a Wayland uh, client, a, gra a Wayland graphical application, and an X11 graphical application. Because uh, if you have support for X Wayland, you can run your X11 application uh, inside uh, a Wayland compositor. Okay, so one of the best tools I have found to uh, play uh, and start to understand how things work when running graphical applications in containers is called X11 Docker. Despite the name, which I think is somehow uh, an historical name, uh, it can be used both to run uh, X11 application and Wayland applications. So disregard the name, you can try almost every option that I have mentioned before uh, with this tool. It's a very simple script. It's actually just one, sim one script, shell script, uh, that allows you to run graphical application or entire desktops inside Docker Linux, Linux containers. Um, it's very simple to try, so you just download the script uh, have a look at the command line options that are available. You select the, the one that you prefer. And the best thing about the project is that it's very, very well documented. So when you have played with what, what is available, you can look behind uh, the, uh, the current curtain and just uh, understand what it is doing. Basically, it's just generating environment variables, uh, copy some uh, very important files, and then preparing a Docker command line for you. So when you're ready, when you have selected the option that uh, fits your use case, uh, you can basically um, disregard the tool uh, just understand what it does and run the same command line that uh, this tool is actually creating for you. So very good to try things out. So uh, we wanted to play uh, with hardware and so we wanted to have a look uh, at some of the uh, issues that you may uh, find with, uh, when using uh, an open source graphics stack or a proprietary graphics stack. So we have two examples here. We work with NXP uh, devices the most, so NXP chips. Uh, we are trying the Etnaviv uh, driver on the IMX6 uh, and the Vivante proprietary, proprietary uh, stack on the IMX8M. Uh, we had to add an MSATA disk because we wanted to try um, 
uh, general available distributions uh, like Fedora or Ubuntu, we didn't want to create our own Yocto OS to, to do this kind of tests uh, because we wanted to stay as general as possible. Um, so to fit the um, Fedora uh, that we were going to install, uh, the space on EMMC was not enough and we installed uh, an MSATA disk to have better performances and um, the space that we needed. So again, to uh, test the open source graphics stack, we tried uh, the Atnaviv driver uh, on Fedora 30 on R. I will go a bit quickly here because basically it's what you need to do to uh, install Fedora on an Apalis IMX6 board. Um, again, you install uh, the disk uh, and copy Fedora on, on, uh, on the board. You adjust U-boot to tell, uh, hey, uh, boot from the SATA disk. And then uh, we had to tweak uh, some kernel parameters uh, because there were some bugs we had to work around uh, or uh, some option that we didn't need. Then we installed the 2D X11 graphics driver. And then, uh, so at that point, we had X11 display server working correctly with 2D and 3D graphics ac acceleration. Um, and we were close to have the same also on Wayland, but there's a small bug in Waystone 6 uh, that prevents the, the session to actually start. So I, I had to build uh, from master from uh, build Waystone 7.0, and then everything was working perfectly, basically. And Fedora already had the uh, Mesa 3D drivers uh, to provide OpenGL 2 and OpenGL ES 2 uh, acceleration. Uh, so this is uh, a quick recap of the uh, installation uh, instructions to build uh, waste them from sources. Let's have a look now um, at how to, so now we have X11 and Wayland working correctly on our host, but we didn't touch Docker yet. So now we want to actually test if everything is working also uh, inside a Docker container. And in this case, uh, so with the open, open source graphics stack, uh, it's been very, very easy because uh, we used an Ubuntu Docker image, uh, a very small and basic uh, Ubuntu uh, image as a start, starting point, and installed the, the application, so the 3D benchmarks that we needed. Uh, and this command line, so apt-get, uh, install glmark2 already provided a measure version uh, with Etnaviv drivers. So we didn't have to copy anything special inside the container. We already had 3D drivers and we just built the Docker image from this Docker file and we had the, our graphical application running inside the container. So here's a brief recap. Uh, of how to use the, the tool, the X11 Docker tool that I mentioned before. Uh, so here there are three examples uh, of running uh, the GLMark to benchmark. In the first case, we are running X, uh, X11 uh, on the host and have an X11 uh, client running inside the container in Docker. This one is not very, um, very isolated, so it's not secure, but if you want performances, uh, of course, in this case, you can use 3D graphics. Um, the other two are 
uh, using Wayland exclusively. So in the second one, we have Waston running on the host, so in the core part of the core OS, and a Wayland client inside uh, the Docker container. And in the last one, instead, we have everything inside the container. Okay, so let's see how we can do the same thing with a proprietary graphic stack. Uh, it's uh, a bit uh, more difficult when you have to write the Docker file um, because, uh, again, we wanted to test the proprietary Vivante uh, graphic stack uh, on a Nitrogen 8M, so basically IMX8. So as you can see here, um, there are some steps you need to do uh, because you will not find the Vivante proprietary graphic stack inside a Ubuntu basic Docker image. So it's not in the um, Ubuntu repositories. Uh, so I had to basically copy the apt get configuration uh, and repositories uh, from the host and install, as you can see, uh, the IMX GPU um, Vivante proprietary graphics driver. Uh, a couple of sim links to tell Ubuntu uh, look in the right places uh, for 3D graphics libraries, uh, and then it was working as, ex as expected. So in this case, we only have support from the proprietary drivers uh, for Waston. So again, here's an example of running X11 Docker um, to um, run the GLMark benchmark. As you can see here, um, we had to share this additional device here. Uh, so the slash dev slash guy core is something that the Vivante uh, kernel drivers creates and of course is needed also on, uh, to be available inside uh, the Docker container. So as you can see here, there are two options related to the GPU. The first one is GPU, which was also in the open source graphic stack which means uh, share, uh, you can see that in the Docker command line that X11 Docker generates, it means share slash dev slash DRI. So the container can access uh, the graphics card device. But in this case, we had also to share this specific device. Uh, so we now have created some uh, examples, we have evaluated the options that we can have, but we want to uh, be sure that what, um, what is running, uh, the, the setup that we have on the host uh, doesn't have any specific advantage over uh, running in Docker. So the question is, does it make any difference running 3D graphics on the inside a container with respect to uh, using host libraries? And the answer is no. So uh, as you can see here, I have three different examples uh, with Wayland, with X11, with the open source graphic stack or with the proprietary graphic stacks. It doesn't make a difference. After all, it's just that you are isolated in a, um, in a process, a dedicated process space when you are using Docker, but you are actually using uh, the resources provided from the same kernel. So the driver in the kernel is the same. What can change, of course, is the 3D graphics drivers. So um, as you can see here, when you are running in the core OS on the host, um, you are using the, um, the MESA implementation provided by 
the host. So Fedora 30 in our case. Uh, so we had Mesa 19.1. Uh, but if you are running inside the Docker container, you you are of course running the Mesa implementation of Ubuntu. So uh, of the uh, user space in the container, so in this case, uh, MESA 19.0. So this is the case for uh, the open source graphics stack on X11. You can see the results are the, the, results are the same um, also when using Wayland on the open source graphics stack and as well on, of course, uh, the proprietary graphic stack, so it doesn't make a difference. Okay, so um, of course we need to take care of security when uh, selecting the, the best option for us to run a graphical application. Um, the first thing that we need to keep in mind are the X11 protocol security flows. So um, it was designed many years ago and it has relevant problems like you are able uh, to capture the whole screen, the whole contents of, of the screen uh, for, uh, from an X, uh, X application. So basically you can grab everything that is on the screen uh, from an application or uh, you can do key logging, so X11 is not a secure protocol, whereas w the Wayland protocol has been designed with security in mind. This is, this is the first thing that you need to keep in mind. Um, uh, then you need to remember that uh, you don't want to be root inside a container and you also want to start uh, the container in background, not from the shell. Because for example, if you are adding your host user to the Docker group, uh, you can actually run Docker command lines from your user on your PC and then you can do nasty things like sharing um, the who root of the host and be root inside the container. So inside the container you are root and you can modify the content of the host, so of your PC or embedded board. So don't do that. And then again, uh, sometimes you need to make compromises for example, sharing uh, the GPU devices uh, is some kind of uh, security violation, but at the moment uh, there are not many options uh, you, in, you can use to work around that. Um, so share uh, as, uh, as least as you can, so don't share what you don't need to share. And of course, start with the uh, highest security possible and then if you really need to disable uh, the security options that uh, that causes you troubles or issues. Okay, uh, so we have seen uh, how to experiment with uh, running uh, applications inside the Docker container. Uh, we have seen some considerations on uh, what you need to think about. So security, uh, of course, uh, is one of the most important things. But, but of course, uh, for example, if you are running just a kiosk application, which is your uh, only applications, uh, you don't need to isolate with something else because something else doesn't exist. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, if you have questions, uh, I'm, uh, I'm open to questions.